Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Fat Man's Guide. Today's episode is for those adventuring souls that hiking during the spring and the summer and the fall just isn't enough. Today we want to talk about what it takes to be able to safely and properly hike during the winter months. Again guys, welcome back to the Fat Man's Guide. Uh, today we're going to talk about what it takes to properly hike during the winter months. Before we get into that, I again want to thank all of you guys for watching the show. Please like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to be able to have you be a part of it. Um, be able to put on notifications so that you know if I uh, put out new videos. Um, please also like uh, the video. And again, if you have any other videos you'd like me to potentially put together, please leave something in the comments for me and I would love to start working on something for you. Now, today folks, we're going to be talking about hiking during the winter. Myself, personally, it's one of my favorite times to go hiking. It is really difficult. Um, it can definitely be trying on your soul, but there's a beauty and a simplicity to hiking during the winter. It's uh, generally one of the quieter times of the year. When you're out, um, with the leaves being off and the snow being down, you can see a lot more of the terrain and the territory, and there's a lot of really beautiful things that every time I go out hiking during the winter, I'm amazed at that I've never actually seen on trails that I've hiked multitudes of times. So I really encourage that if you haven't ever done it before, you should get out and do some winter hiking. But with that being said, we have to be able to put together a plan on how to be able to hike during the winter. Because depending on where you live at, you could be dealing with a lot of extreme weather. You could be dealing with extreme temperatures. Uh, I know there's a lot of times I go hiking that it's close to zero, or I have done a number of times hiked sub-zero. Um, you could be dealing with all forms of weather from a standpoint of you know, heavy snow, rain, sleet, and you have to be able to deal with all those things because when you add the weather to the temperatures, that can put a lot of people in a bad spot. And understand that during the winter, if something bad happens, an injury or, or you get lost, you could be caught out in those extreme elements and you have to have a plan for how to deal with it. So before we get into talking about what some of our plans need to be for an emergency situation, I want to be able to talk about what I take on a basic hike during the winter. One of the first things I obviously I'm going to do is I'm going to be picking a pack. I like to use this pack right here. Uh, that's my standby pack that I use for everything I do. It's not huge, but it definitely has enough space to be able to carry just about anything that I could possibly need. And the other thing that I also use is I also use a fanny pack. I always have a fanny pack with me. I can put my phone in here if I want to take pictures. I can put snacks in here. Um, if I have an extra set of gloves maybe that I may want, I can put it in here. So I think a fanny pack is a very valuable resource. And as far as footwear goes, uh, during the winter months uh, is the only time I really wear a waterproof shoe. Uh, this is just a waterproof trail runner that I like to use. Um, it uh, allows me to be able to keep my feet a little bit warmer, keeps the heat in, doesn't let it out as much. Um, also keeps the moisture uh, from seeping into the shoe uh, from the snow around you. Um, one of the things that I haven't used before, but I'm looking at using uh, this winter, is uh, getting some uh, uh, ankle shields that I can actually attach to the shoe, which will keep the snow from getting into the, uh, into the shoe uh, coming over, depending on how deep the snow is. But uh, that's what I just use just for basic footwear. Now, as far as what you're wearing, uh, the key here, and the most important word I could, I could stress is layers. Layers, layers, layers. Now, as far as the layers that I'm going to use, um, you don't want big and puffy. Big and puffy, cottons, things like that, they're going to absorb a lot of water, um, they're not going to dry fast, and uh, when you get hit by the wind or if you stop, you're going to freeze very quickly. So what I tend to utilize is a lot of microfibers. Um, what I will always use is I will always use a microfiber t-shirt um, that will be my first layer and then I'll always end up having at least two layers generally that I'm wearing of microfiber long sleeve uh, shirts and again it doesn't matter if they're real big what it is is it's the layering it allows you to be able to keep that heat from expelling from the body if you put one big thick puffy layer on once that heat's gone it's gone but as the heat goes from layer to layer to layer the heat is still um, next to you and it's going to keep you a lot warmer. 
What it also allows you to do by doing these layers is if you do get warmer or if you do get uh, a lot of moisture from sweat or what have you, you can take a layer off and still keep a layer. If you only have one big warm jacket, if you get you know too warm, you take it off, now you're down to your base layer. You're gonna freeze fast. And then what I also end up uh, utilizing, of course, is I will have a fleece that I will end up wearing on the outside layer um, that generally, again, speak mine is a synthetic fleece, and that's just another layer to keep all that warmth in. As far as uh, my socks, you guys have been out here before, you know I'm kind of a sock freak. Uh, I still use just darn tufts. Um, again, they're a thicker sock. Um, they wick moisture away pretty darn well. They're definitely softer, and uh, to me, they're, they're a great sock. I use them all the time. Now, for what I'm wearing on the lower half, um, I just do something really simple. Um, I wear a pair of athletic microfiber shorts um, that allow me to be able to breathe, um, and I just wear a pair of thin uh, wind pants. Uh, what my experience has been hiking, if you wear anything much thicker, it'll absorb a lot of moisture because uh, you're hiking through snow um, or any other type of uh, rain, sleet, whatever else. All of that comes down to the bottom of your legs. You're dragging your legs around. Uh, the nice thing about these wind pants is they don't soak anything up. Um, they do have a windbreak, which is really nice, and they basically just keep the cold from having a direct exposure to the skin. I really don't need a lot of warmth on my legs. Um, so that's all I do for the lower half. Now, as far as uh, the rest of what I'm going to end up wearing, uh, I'm always going to end up wearing a warm knit cap to be able to keep the heat from leaving my head. Um, I always have at least one of those, uh, two, just in case this one gets really wet. Uh, I'll take, I have a thinner one that I just take as, as a spare backup. Another thing that I'm always going to have with me is I'm always going to have two pairs of gloves. Uh, number one, just in case one pair gets wet, I want to be able to get those off of my hands. But at the same time, uh, with gloves, if uh, for some reason my hands start freezing, if one pair isn't enough, I just have these, these thin work gloves, um, I can put on a second pair. I can put them right over top of the other pair. I can double it up and again, layering at its best. And then the last thing I always bring, this might seem kind of weird to people who haven't done this much, but I would bring a rain jacket. Now, the beauty about the rain jacket, this is just a simple frog togs rain jacket. It's super thin, very light. The thing about a rain jacket is, is a rain jacket's job is to keep moisture out. And if you're hiking in snow or sleet, rain, it's really cold, it's going to do a great job of that. Always does. But the other thing that it does is it's a great windbreak. During the winter, if you get those wind gusts and it's super cold, if it's sub-zero with no wind, most people can handle that. If it's 40 degrees and really windy, you're going to freeze to death just because of how the wind strikes your body. And so my experience has been by utilizing this, it's a great windbreak. The other thing that's awesome about it is it's a bonus insulation layer and probably one of the most important if you get really, really cold. If you get really cold, it doesn't let moisture uh, in. It also doesn't let heat out. So it actually ends up being an insulating layer and it keeps all of your heat inside of you. Now you do have to understand that because of this, you won't lose a lot of moisture, and, you, and that's why I always carry a, a third, um, a third microfiber layer to be able to switch out just in case I get too moist underneath of it. But this rain jacket will do wonders to keep you much warmer when you're out there hiking during the winter. Now, as far as the gear that I'm always going to end up taking with me, um, as always, I've always got an emergency kit put together. I just put mine in a little baggie, um, tape. Advil, uh, eye drops, um, band-aids, whatever I may end up needing if there's a, an issue. Um, the thing I always bring with me is I always bring an energy pack. And by energy pack, what I mean is it's uh, you know got these Gatorade chews and Gatorade drink mix, uh, GU goos, just something that just in case for some reason I needed an energy, I needed a rush, I've always got it, and that can be very useful. Uh, during the winter if for some reason you find yourself in an emergency situation. Um, always bring toiletries um, and always make sure again follow uh, the practices of leave no trace. Always bring something to be able to dig yourself some kind of hole if given the opportunity depending on where you're at and how cold it is. Now when it comes to water, um, I've done it before where I've always used like my platypus bag in the back. Uh, the thing about doing that in the winter, especially if it gets really cold, 
is that little pipe will freeze really quickly. So you have a couple different things you could potentially do with that. What I've found a lot easier is I just go back to the water bottle. Um, the water bottle, again, doesn't freeze near as quick. Um, you, it's always kind of moving, shaking around so it doesn't freeze right up. If you had to, you could, you could take it, put it next to the body, warm up. Uh, so I've found during the winter, it's just a lot easier to utilize a water bottle. Another thing I always still bring with me, um, always bring a flashlight, uh, especially if for some reason we find ourselves in an emergency situation. This would come in really handy, if nothing more than for your psyche. Now, uh, one of the other things that is a little bit different for the winter that I'm always gonna bring with me, I didn't used to use these, and I started using them in the last year, and that's uh, the Yak Tracks. Um, Yak Tracks is a uh, adapter, basically, that you put on your shoes to act as though it was um, tire chains. So if you get into an icy spot, um, you have something that's going to give you more grip. Now the reason this is important for those who've never gone out hiking during the winter, you do not have near the traction due during the normal time of the year because of snow, especially if you're hiking with snow. Um, if you're in an area where you don't get much snow, you won't notice this, but if you're uh, in a northern environment like I am, you hike in a lot of snow and your feet are always working side to side. You're going to feel it totally differently in your knees, uh, in your ankles, in your hips. And so by utilizing something like these Yak Tracks, um, it gives you a lot more stability. And all you end up doing with them is you just put them on your shoe, just like uh, you would a tire. Um, you can see they're on there pretty sturdy. They're not falling off. And uh, they've got these little metal barbs on them. And uh, that ends up being what gives you traction. Now this particular pair I really like because instead of getting stuck, they rotate around the system here so that as you're walking, they're not just packing in uh, with ice and snow. But again, they go right on your shoe, very simple like this. They give you a lot more traction, a lot more stability um, when you're walking. Probably one of the most important things I've started adding to my repertoire for winter hiking. Now, with all that being said, we now have to talk about emergency. Um, you should always think about if an emergency happens when you go out hiking, never more important than during the winter because of the extreme temperatures. So there's a couple things that I always make sure to take with me. Um, now obviously you can utilize your toiletry to be able to help make fire. Um, I also like to take a little bit of um, uh, the, the, the fuzzy crap out of your dryer. I like to throw that in there too because that starts up really fast. I always take a set of matches. I also take my flint just in case I need to. Because um, if you end up getting in a spot where you have to spend the night in the woods, a fire is going to be unbelievably important if you can find a way to make one. A couple other things I always end up taking, I'm always taking extra stuff, uh, most importantly socks. I always take a couple extra pair of socks. Um, the first off, unbelievably useful for your feet if you have to get them out. Um, if for some reason uh, your hands were freezing, you could use them that way too. Um, but knowing that uh, I want to keep my feet warm and knowing that my feet are definitely going to be moist from hiking, I like to be able to swap those out. I'm also, as I said earlier, always going to take an extra microfiber that uh, I can throw on either as a fourth layer or uh, depending if you end up in a spot where you have an emergency, being able to put this dry layer next to your skin will feel a lot better than having that layer that's been developing moisture all day. That's going to help keep you a little bit warmer. Another thing that I will always take with me is a sleeping bag. Now this one is a, it's, it's not a low rated sleeping bag, um, but it's the lightest one that I have. And, and if, if I'm not sure if I'm going to end up needing it, I don't want to pack you know, a really uh, heavy sleeping bag. But I'm always going to take this because if for some reason there's an emergency, even if this wasn't rated down to 10 degrees, it's better than nothing. And uh, if it allows me to be able to cover myself um, and be able to help me try to stay warmer, I'm always going to have this with me because you never ever know if something's going to happen. Another thing that I always have with me is uh, this uh, hammock cover. Uh, this is actually the, the cover for whenever if I were to go out and, and go hammocking to be able to give myself a rain cover. But what I found really cool about this is, is it acts like a tent in any situation. I can use my, my hiking poles to set it up. Um, I'm not a tent user. I tend to just uh, find a tree and uh, sleep under that if I really wanted to. Um, but if I take this, I can set this up and this acts as a makeshift tent. I'm going to take this when I go hiking during the winter. 
Um, not because it's going to give me some great cover, but if I have nothing else to make a shelter with, I can utilize this to give me some coverage, or if I am able to make a shelter, I can also always tie this up to be able to give me another layer on my shelter, and it might also keep me drier depending on if it's raining or sleeting or whatever else. Um, and again, uh, it's not heavy, totally worth something to take. One of the last things I always have in my pack, and I know I could have just put it with my normal stuff that I bring, but I think especially during the winter it's important. I always have an emergency blanket. That's pretty beat up. But that's because I've always got one in my pack. And I've used a lot of these before. Even if it was just summer hiking and I, I don't take, you know, a, a bunch of warm stuff with me, temperature drops real hard during the night, wasn't expecting it, I'm feeling the chill. I can just get this thing out. I've used this as a rain cover at night when I've tried sleeping and all of a sudden it starts drizzling and, and, and uh, raining on me. I've used that as a rain cover. Um, this is one of the most important multi-tools you can have. Make sure that you have one of these emergency blankets. And as always, uh, you know, when doing this, make sure that you tell someone where you're going to be so that if for some reason you don't come back, they have an idea of where to find you. It may not be the first night, but after you don't show up after the first night and it's winter, there's going to be someone coming out to look for you. Make sure you stay close to that trail. Make sure that you have, um, you know, a, a map of the area, if at all possible. That will help you have an understanding of where you're at and maybe where you need to get to. Uh, but most importantly, always, always, always make sure someone knows where you're at when you head it out. Again, guys, thanks so much for watching the episode today. Uh, I'm hoping here uh, in the next week or so to make another uh, winter tutorial. I'd like to be able to talk about when you're out there hiking, how to kind of plan that winter hike, how to follow the trail, because following a trail during the winter is entirely different, especially if you have snow, and just some of the things that you can look for if you find yourself in a tough situation. As always, like, subscribe, share the video with anyone that you think might be uh, interested in it. And please come back and watch more episodes in the future. As always, folks, live life to the fullest without excuses. See ya. Actual uh, things that you need. I love you, darling. Let me finish this first. Urgh. Oh, God. I hate that cat. I cannot do this. You're in the background. You are bugging me. Kitty, kitty. You are bugging me. You know what? You're a little monster. You are a little monster. No. Go over there. Go over there. Here. There. Good. Now you're not going to be in here.